Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel. When you're climbing up a hill and your wheels start to slip, one reaction is to hit the throttle and increase that wheel speed. Does this help or hurt? Does faster wheel speed increase traction? On this channel, we look at the science behind our grown-up toys. In college, I took a course in tribology, which is the science of friction and wear, and it's proved to be super useful. Let's look at the basic math behind friction, which ultimately drives traction. This is the equation for friction. It's surprisingly simple. This is the frictional force. You can think of it as the amount of force required to initiate slipping. This is the Greek letter mu, which is the coefficient of friction, which I'll explain more in a moment. And this is something called the normal force, which can be thought of as the down force. It's the force perpendicular to the driving surface. If you're on flat ground, it's basically the weight of the vehicle divided by the four wheels. If you're moving fast and you have wings on your car, you can artificially increase your downforce with aerodynamic effects. Not really a factor on slow moving crawlers. We only have the weight of the vehicle to play with. Here's what it looks like. This is the normal force pushing down. This is the coefficient of friction, which you would have to look up somewhere. And this is the resulting frictional force. This is the frictional force that propels the vehicle forward. Your axle and chassis move forward because this frictional force opposes the rotation of the wheels. There are actually two different types of friction, and this equation has two versions. There is the static version when you have perfect traction, and there is the kinetic version for when the wheels are slipping. You might think of this as the dynamic or sliding or slipping friction. Whether you are burning out the tires or fishtailing, anytime the wheels are sliding or slipping, this is the kinetic friction realm. The basic equation is the same, but there is simply a difference in the coefficient of friction in both scenarios. You should also know that the kinetic coefficient is always lower than the static coefficient. If you think about it, this should be obvious because your vehicle doesn't move forward as effectively when your wheels are slipping, right? So this number is always lower. The static equation applies when you have traction. The kinetic version applies when you are slipping. The normal force is the same in both cases. When you're on an incline or a decline, the downforce from the weight of the vehicle is no longer pushing perpendicular to the ground. Some of the weight is contributing to the normal force, but some of the weight is now pulling you backwards down the slope. This backwards force is working against your frictional force, and at a certain steepness, your normal force will be overridden by the rearward force. This is when you stop climbing. Let's assume your vehicle has 1,000 grams of weight on one tire and the slope is 45 degrees. If you use some middle school trigonometry, cosine 45 degrees, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you'll see that the normal force is now reduced to 710 grams. It's not the full thousand grams anymore. And you've also got 710 grams pulling you back down the hill. Coefficients are usually determined experimentally they are also the relationship between two materials. You can't just say rubber has a coefficient of X. The coefficient is the combination of the two materials in question, like G8 rubber and granite, or predator compound and asphalt. Now you might hear someone say X rubber has a lower coefficient than Y rubber, and that's just a broad generalization. An actual scientific claim would have to include both the tire compound and the ground it's in contact with. So back to this simplified formula. What's missing? Tire compound, air pressure, wheel diameter, wheel width, tread pattern, foam insert stiffness, contact patch size. Why aren't any of these things accounted for? This coefficient of friction would take into consideration tire compound, wet or dry conditions, tread pattern, driving surface roughness, 
and also the temperature at which the coefficient was determined would need to be specified. What's not in the coefficient is the area of the contact patch, which is a function of the stiffness of the foam insert or tire pressure on a pneumatic tire. If you lower the tire pressure, your contact patch gets bigger, but your coefficient of friction and normal force do not change. When you lower the pressure or put in softer inserts, you're just spreading the normal force over a bigger area. So it actually balances out. Contact patch size does not change your friction or traction. And that's a great topic for another video. What I want to point out here is that wheel speed does not appear anywhere in our discussion so far. So you can conclude that if your wheels are spinning faster or slower, your friction does not change. Let's take a look at that principle in action. I think I'll stop and do a little rock crawling here at the map. This turned out to be a perfect rock to demonstrate that wheel speed has almost no effect on traction. This underlying math is a simplification, and in real life there are a few other situations and variables that come into play. One thing that happens is your tires heat up. This is critical in drag racing in F1. Hot tires are stickier. On a small light crawler like this, I don't really know how much they're heating up, but it helps in theory. This bouncing is an undamped oscillation, usually coming from your tires and inserts, which don't have a lot of inherent damping. It can also come from chassis links and axle flex. It's certainly not coming from your shocks. What happens is a phenomenon called stick-slip, which is an engineering term. Your wheels switch from a state of traction to non-traction, between kinematic friction and static friction. This causes a chain reaction and your undamped parts start to bounce. And you can see it's tough to stop the bouncing. The interesting thing is that you are getting increased traction from the down part of the bounce, but losing traction and even contact with the rock on the up bounce. Sometimes that bouncing will actually work in your favor. In my experience, I usually get bounced somewhere I don't want to be. And sometimes all the variables line up and you're able to make progress. So, punching the throttle and increasing wheel speed isn't going to automatically increase your traction. You might heat up your tires, burn some dust off the rocks, or you might just polish the rocks and make them slicker. Or you could get lucky and bounce your way onto a better situation. You'll just have to try and see what happens. Oh, oh.